Good morning. Today, in the midst of pandemic and protests, I invite you into the very presence of God. Worship with us as we're reminded that God loves all of God's children and calls each of us to love one another. Join us then in the songs and the sermon. Join us as we lift the symbols of worship. Join us and be reminded that in our humanity, we are all united and one under God. Worship draws us together across time and space and true worship removes all the barriers that would keep us from understanding who we are as human beings. Worship with us today and be blessed. Giving is an act of worship before God. Friends, we are living in unprecedented times, times that none of us have ever seen before. People are anxious, hurting, and fearful, and looking to the church to provide hope, to, pro to provide peace. Giving is an act of worship. And when we give, we give so that the church can meet needs in the community. We give so that we're able to partner with other churches and ministries to offer services to families in need. We give to faithfully carry out the mission that God has given us. We give so that God's name will be glorified. During this time of great need, we ask that you consider giving beyond your tithes and offerings. Here are the ways that you can give. You can give by mail, by mailing to either Mount Zion UMC or Harwood Park UMC at the addresses on your screen. You can give electronically by going online to easytithe.com or downloading the Easy Tithe app for Android or iOS. We ask that if you use a, a digital method to give your tithes and offerings that you consider adding $5 to help us offset processing fees. There are other ways for you to give. You can give to the Maryland Food Bank. 
you can give to the Seeding Hope COVID-19 fund for our conference. This fund provides micro grants to churches who are meeting direct needs to families in their communities. You can sew masks and give them away. You can volunteer at food giveaways and other um, options in the community where the community is being serviced. You can pray for your church, your world, and your leaders. You can shop for those who are unable to get out and shop for themselves right now. You can call and check on the people in your neighborhood, in your church, in your family, whatever you do. I want to remind us that giving is an act of worship. Let's show the world who God is by how we worship with our hands, with our feet, with our mouths, and with our giving. Amen. Only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I would do Is forever Forever worship you only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing and hallelujah Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, 
forever worship you. I can only imagine. Join me in reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom of priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he's coming with the clouds, with every eye will see him even those who pierced him, and on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So be it. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And for a word today, pandemic, protest, and presence. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you and we praise you that in this time of global pandemic, you've made it clear to us that your spirit is active in the world. God, remind us that in a time of protest, that our job as the church is to stand with those who are downtrodden, those who are vulnerable, those who have been oppressed down through the ages. Remind us, Lord God, in this moment, that Black lives matter. Remind us that all life is precious to God, but that God has always had a preference for those who are being oppressed. Let the church stand then with those whom God chooses. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the past three months, we've experienced a pandemic of global proportions. And in this pandemic, persons affected are gasping for breath. We've witnessed on tape the murder of George Floyd and his last words were, I can't breathe. We've seen people so convicted by the notion that God created all human beings as persons of sacred worth that they've thrown off the shackles of being sheltered in place for COVID-19. They've thrown away all aspects of social distancing. They are sometimes donning masks and sometimes not, but they're standing to declare that God created all human beings in God's image. All of this is going on right now. We've seen the best of humanity those who sacrifice themselves to care for others. And we've seen the worst of humanity. Those who use this time of unrest as a time to stir up dissidents, a time to take care of their personal gratifications, a time to point the finger at others. What is the church's response in this hour? Do we just put our head in the sands and say, praise the Lord, I'm blessed and highly favored? Or is there a word for the church and from the church today? John was a follower of Jesus Christ and he had been sent to prison on an island called Patmos because he dared to say that Christian lives matter. 
he dared to say that every life is so important that God sent God's son so that whoever believed in God's son would not perish, but have everlasting life. John is sent to prison because he had the audacity to declare that Jesus Christ died for all and Jesus was the only way to salvation. He's sent to an island called Patmos. Patmos is similar to our Alcatraz in that it's on an island and it's a little bit difficult to get to and to escape from. John is on this island and probably a lot like you and me, complaining a little bit to God, you know, God, I've done everything you've called me to do. I've, I've stood up for those who were unable to stand for themselves. I preached the gospel everywhere I went and look where it's gotten me. Look what happens when I stood up against the status quo. But somewhere in the middle of John's despair, God sends him an angel. And the angel, like Morpheus in the movie, The Matrix, says to John, come on up here for a minute and welcome to the desert of the real. For you see, John was so focused on what was going on in terms of his own circumstance that he's unable to see or even imagine that there's something more important going on for the whole world. And John is given the privilege to see it. John was suddenly ushered into the presence of God. And, and I really believe that sometime in the midst of John's complaint, he said, you know what? I'm down, but I'm not out. I might be on this island, but at least God has not left me by myself. I'm crushed, but I'm not defeated. I imagine he said, like Paul, I'm hard pressed on every side, but I'm still standing. I'm confused, but I haven't given up. I'm persecuted, but God is still with me, beaten, but not destroyed. And all of a sudden, then John moves from his own self-perception to the perception that God wants him to have. John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then God stepped in and touched me and my whole situation changed. John went from moaning and groaning to thinking and praising. He stopped complaining about being on lockdown and began to understand that being on physical lockdown does not bind our hearts, our minds, and our spirits if we don't let it. For the truth is, we're all on lockdown. Yeah, we're lifting restrictions from COVID-19. We're being allowed to um, go and resume some of our normal activities, but we're still locked down by racism. We're still locked down by sexism. We're still locked down by the idea that if someone doesn't believe like me and act like me and talk like me and dress like me, that somehow that person is of less value than me. We're still locked down by the old mode of doing things and the old mode of deciding what's worthy. But God is calling us to the desert of the real in worship so that we begin to see beyond our current circumstance and our current limitations, and we begin to move toward the future that God has prepared for us. So John is called up into heaven, and John sees what's going on from heaven's perspective, not just from his perspective. For when we are connected to the spirit of God, we see for ourselves the futility of the barriers that we've placed to divide ourselves, the barriers of racism and sexism, the barriers of nationalism, the barriers that keep us separated and closed in. Jesus appears to John and says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. John, I'm the one that died, but now I'm alive 
forevermore. I went to the cross to break down every barrier in humanity. And so John is given a task to write, write to the church at Ephesus and let them know that they won't die if they let go of all of their policies and procedures that exclude people. It's okay to not do things the way we've always done them before. Write to the church at Smyrna and let them know that they don't have to be held back and held captive by their poverty. Write to the church at Pergamum and let them know that death does not have to make them afraid because the one they serve has already conquered death. Write to the church at Thyatira and let them know that even false prophecies and fake news can't keep them from God's destiny. Write to the church at Sardis and tell them it's time to wake up. It's time to acknowledge all the isms and issues that keep people excluded and away from the hand of God. Let them know that they're not doing the work of justice that they were created to do. Write to the church at Philadelphia and remind them that I've broken them out of the prison of self-centeredness and write to the church of Laodicea and let them know that if they don't change their ways, they will surely die. Jesus is saying to John and to the church, I'm the one in control. No matter how many times the church sanctions violence and racism, no matter how many threats materialize, no matter how the isms of this world rage on and on, no matter who doesn't like us or who talks about us, or who writes us off as insignificant. Understand this. This is Jesus talking. I'm the one who walks among the seven lampstands, and I have the power to both establish kingdoms and tear them down. Jesus assures John that he's the one that's really in charge, and then he takes John up into the heavenly so that John can see and understand from God's perspective what's really going on. See, John's perspective and our perspective is down here in the trenches, often discouraged and frustrated because we can't really see what's going on. But John was reminded and John writes to remind us that we serve the God of the universe and that God is already working things out on our behalf. When John gets up into the heavenly, he sees a number that no person can count. People of all races and ethnicities, people from every tribe and nation. And he saw angels and heavenly creatures crowded around the throne of God, all bowing down, not to any ideology, not to any faith tradition, not to any set of rules. They were bowing down before the throne of God, God's self. And it dawned on John that God alone is the center of the universe. And even when it looks like all hell is breaking loose here on earth, God will handle God's business. So John's perspective changed. And then his focus changed. A lot of what we go through is because we're focused on ourselves. We're focused on our own comfort. We're self-centered. We're self-serving. We're always doing that thing, which is the best for me. But God calls us to a different focus and a different perspective. Because when we begin to focus on God and not ourselves, we open up all the possibilities that God has for us. We see people like God sees them. We see circumstances like God sees them. And when we see things the way God sees them, we have the power to change. When we recognize that when we cut any human being, regardless of the color, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of ableness, Regardless of age, they all bleed and they all bleed red. 
when you look at us on the inside, we're all the same. Therefore, any ideology that lists one group of people over another is an ideology that's no longer focused on God. John received God's vision and that vision reoriented John's mind so that even though his body was physically on lockdown, his mind, his soul, his spirit were able to see and respond to what God says and what God is doing in the world. And finally, once his perspective changed and once his focus changed, John began to live in the presence of God. There's healing in the presence of God. There's restoration in the presence of God. There's freedom in the presence of God. There is reconciliation in the presence of God. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me and he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The presence of God motivates us to action and reminds us that God has a plan and a purpose for God's people. God did not send a pandemic and God did not orchestrate the murder of George Floyd, but God is using that to remind us of some things. God is using these two events to remind us that all of humanity is important, that every life, no matter the age, no matter the racial identity, no matter the gender, no matter the nationality or sexual orientation, every life is important to God. As we look at the counts that are going up because of COVID-19, we're realizing that all of us are impacted and all of us are vulnerable when we look at the losses in this nation, particularly around racism, around classism, around this idea that if you don't make a certain amount, if you're not a productive member of society, then perhaps you are expendable we found during this COVID-19 that some of the folk we thought were expendable are essential. And some that we thought were essential are not as essential as we thought. The truth is Jesus came, he lived, and he died. He got up from the grave to remind us that all of us are essential. I invite us to move from pandemic and protest into God's presence. I want us to protest. I want us to stand against racism. I want us to stand against sexism. I want us to stand against any ism in this world that pits human beings against other human beings. I want us to stand up for the poor. I want us to stand up for the unborn. I want us to stand up in ways that count for people who aren't able to stand up for themselves. But in all of our standing, I want us to remember that we operate out of the presence of God and in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Send us love, 
Send us power, send us grace.